There is indeed no God like Jehovah. God bless you for making time with me today as I bring to you the infallible word of God, the very word that comes from the throne room of grace, the word that is full of power and authority to set you free from every wings and caprices of the enemy. Shall we share a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless your name for today, for yet another day and an opportunity to bring your word to your people. I pray in the name of Jesus, committing every soul that is under the sound of my voice into your great care. I pray that you speak of God to their hearts and let your word bring healing and deliverance to God in their lives in Jesus' mighty name. I bless your name of God. I pray that you give understanding to the simple. In Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. God bless you so much. I began this short series that is captioned the secrets of self-control and i believe that i've been able to share important aspect of this teachings with you but today god will take us to another dimension altogether to look at these secrets of self-control so that we will receive power from above and get ourselves empowered from the throne room of God so that we will be in the position to be able to exercise great deal of self-control in all our endeavors in the name of Jesus. Last time we said so many things about self-control. We said that you need to learn to control yourself or else someone will control you and this is very real thing in our day and age we've been able to control everything around us we learned that we have even the ability to control the sun and the sun raises are converted into solar energy and we use it to power our various gadgets in our various homes we've been able to control so many things around us but one of the difficult things that we've not been able to master is to control ourselves throughout scriptures we understood the other time that Many great men and women have been able to conquer the world around them. Some have been able to conquer the greatest enemy that they believe they have on this planet. But there is one thing that they have failed to do to conquer themselves. And as a result, they ended up so miserable in life. And I believe that some of us are going through certain challenges that came into being because of our inability to control ourselves. I said something last time that we don't just wake up and say we want to sin and then we get into sin. But everything begins with the mind. That is why the Bible said that we shouldn't conform to the pattern of this world. But we should be transformed by the renewal of our minds. Because what happens is that when you think about something which we all know results in our thoughts, our thoughts then becomes our action because what we think is what we do the bible says that as a man thinkers in his heart so is he so what we think is what we do and our action becomes a habit because the moment you do something and you repeat it the second time becomes a habit and then you continue to do it now your habit we understood the other time that it, be, it determines your destiny and i believe that some of us 
are desiring to get to the top and in order to make it to the top and remain there perpetually you need to master your ability to control yourself through our scriptures we have great men and women who God used to do exploits, but their end became a failure. Why? Because most of them were not able to control themselves. And then I said something that today everybody talks about right. Everybody says that, well, I have the right to do this. It is within my right to do this, and it's within my right to do that. But in the spirit of self-control, we don't have to do what we think is right but what god asks us to do or what god requires from us in other words doing what we ought to do and not what we want to do if we make it our habit if we enshrine this in our thinking pattern then it will become our action and then the moment we begin to exhibit it it becomes an habit and once it becomes our habit it would then define our destiny and what is that destiny that destiny has to do with what god has purpose concerning our lives remember the bible made us to understand that we are constantly at war with the flesh because Jesus came to deliver us from sin and the power of sin. Not this. He came to deliver us from sin and the power of sin. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we will become the righteousness of God. He died in our place to deliver us from the grip of sin and having done that he gave us the spirit to love and to exercise self-control because the more we control our actions and ensure that they are in line with the word of God the more we obtain favor from him and the more we appear secured in all quarters that when the enemy rushes in into our lives like a flood the spirit of the Lord will be present to lift up a standard against the enemy why because our defense is still sure and established and fortified the more we learn to control ourselves to conform to the things of god or to the written word of god we will then put ourselves gradually into an arena where we are perfectly protected by the grace and by the power of god which is in his word hallelujah we are constantly in battle with the flesh and in the battle in, in your battle of self control the enemy that we are dealing with is not the person you feel hates you or does not like you the enemy that you are constantly battling against in your battle of self control it's not the person across the street it's not your, your next door neighbor who you feel or think doesn't like you that enemy is you last time we said that your will is the reflection of you when you look into the mirror what do you see in the mirror that your image that you see in the mirror is the reflection of your will because you wake up in the morning and you decide how you want your face to look like some decide to extend their eyelashes and eyelids and some decide to shave off their beard some decide to wear them and decorate them so when you look into the mirror what you see is the reflection of your will and i believe some of you will be thinking so 
does it does it mean that what i am today is of my own making yes how you appear today and what is happening in your life is within your own control now you can change your circumstances by surrendering your spirit soul and body into the control of the spirit of god the bible says that as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god you may be successful in leading other people you may be successful in building a business empire you may be successful in making money but if you cannot control yourself you are finished and let me repeat that you may be successful in every area of your life if you are not able to control yourself you are finished we spoke about men and women who have ro rose uh, who have risen to prominence and within a twinkle of an eye they've fallen from that great height to a place of nowhere they just become useless in life they lose everything they have a typical example is what we read in the bible about the prodigal son he was living a life of luxury in his father's house and then he decided that he wanted to inherit his father whilst the man was still alive something that is not legal in any sense something that is not morally right in any sense because you cannot inherit somebody who is alive inheritance is what they leave behind for you and as long as they remain alive it belongs to them the only thing you can have from them is a gift so they can parcel the same inheritance as a gift but this man told his dad that i want you to assume that you are dead and that i cannot wait anymore he lacked the the the, the, the ability to control himself in the area of patience to exercise patience he declared his dad dead in the mind and it does not end there he then went forward and say give me my share of your inheritance assuming you are dead and the father gave everything to him instantly he became very rich and the bible gave an account that he traveled to a long distance a far place and then he squandered everything somebody who was rich within a twinkle of an eye lost everything why because he lacked the ability to control himself the other time when i thought about prodigality you understood the various steps the seven downward steps that he took to lose everything he had because he lacked self-control every human being on this planet has something called the flesh which constantly wage war or wages war against you to do something contrary to the word of god and as christians we are regularly at war against three things the world the flesh and the devil and it is our duty to conquer them and the only way we can do this is to make sure that we fill ourselves with the word of god which is doctrine the other time i said that christianity is not only about doctrine but it is about discipline and doctrine you take the word of god and you apply the word of god going to church every sunday does not make you a christian 
being baptized by a church does not make you a Christian. Being born into a church or affiliating yourself with a particular church and paying your tithe on every month or on a weekly basis does not make you a Christian. A Christian is somebody who has accepted the Lordship of Christ over their lives and they've opened their hearts and allowed the doctrine of the gospel to fill their spirit, soul, and body. And then they regularly apply the principle of self-control to discipline themselves based on the word that they've received. If you look at the present day Christian, our attitude is far from what the Bible teaches. And the reason is we've taken the doctrine, but we lack the discipline that will make the doctrine reflect on our lives. It doesn't matter how successful you've become. Sometimes we judge men and women of God by virtue of the fact that they have large followings or they fluently speak English and express themselves and preach very well and make nice analogies in their preaching. In this day and age, people have even adopted certain style of speaking. If you don't speak like that, you are not a man or a woman of God or you are not seasoned. But success in that contest has nothing to do with your ability to lead. It has nothing to do with the way you speak. It has nothing to do with what you can offer other people. It has to do with your ability to control yourself. What area in your life is out of control? Great men who used to control millions and billions of pounds and dollars comes to a point where they are declared bankrupt and they don't even have anything. We hear about them in the newspapers. We read about them on the internet. We hear about them on the radio and we watch them on the television. How, where they got to and how they have fallen to the ground. And sometimes people are interviewed to make comments and they suggest certain books which contain certain strategies and principles to help people do so many things. But I want you to understand that as a child of God, your strength comes from above and it comes from the word of God. Jesus said that the word that I speak to you is both spirit and it's life. There is some kind of anointing in the word of God which has the ability to empower you to overcome in every situation. Sometimes we say that I am doing this because of my circumstance. I spoke to a young man and I asked him, why are you indulging yourself in this kind of life, he said that man of God is because of my circumstance. If I have someone to help me, I will not do that. And I said to him, it has nothing to do with your circumstance. Do you know why? There are people who are in a worse situation than your situation, but they are not doing what you are doing. Doing something and branding it that in the, in, the, in the perspective of your circumstance will not help you. Do you know what the devil def, uh, uh, um, say about sin? The devil tried to rationalize sin. That is his option for asking for forgiveness and repenting from, for, from your sin. He gives you the urge to rationalize everything that you do. Even if you are in the wrong, he tells you that it is because of your circumstance. It is because of what you are going through. That is why you are doing that. Let no one deceive you. Encourage yourself. Once the circumstances change, you will also change. No way. I said the other time that those who are faithful 
with little will be faithful with much. If you are stealing because you don't have today, when you have more, you will steal. You will continue to steal. It will surprise you that you will never be satisfied because it's, it's an act. Remember, your thought becomes your action. Your action becomes your habit. And your habit defines your destiny. It has nothing to do with your circumstance. A woman was telling me that she's into prostitution to support herself because of her circumstance. And I told her there are poorer people in Africa who even struggle to have one meal a day and they are not into prostitution. They don't have all this luxury of um, benefit system where you sit at home and you still get paid and then they even pay your rent and so on and so forth. They don't have those luxury. Some even do not have a place they will call home and yet they are not into that. That tells you your circumstance has nothing to do with your ability to control yourself. Your circumstance has nothing to do with your ability to control yourself. Those who strive to achieve always learn to control themselves. Let me repeat that. Those who strive to achieve, just like the Olympians. I gave an example the other time. About two brothers running on the same track. And they did not hug themselves. They did not hold their hands. They, for once, they forgot that they were sibling. And they competed against each other. Until they crossed the finish line. They did not just start on that day. But they endured. They, they learned strategies. They put their body to test. They worked very hard. On their self-discipline, their self-denial, and their self-control. When others were sleeping, they will wake up and then go on the track and begin to practice. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and feel like I want to stand outside. And you see people jogging around. Some were doing that in order to lose weight. That is self-discipline. They have decided not to kill themselves prematurely. And they've decided when others were sleeping, that is the time that they put pressure on this body to make sure that they will shed some weight in order to stay alive. That is self-control, self-denial, and self-discipline. Sleep is good. When you were snor snoring, they were putting their body to thirst. Putting themselves under enormous pressure in order to burn some fat in the body. But the lazy ones will wait until there is nothing they could do. And that their only hope will be a surgical intervention. Self-control. When you change... You will be in control. Your circumstances will not change until you change. What kind of self control do you have over your marriage? That is a big question. What kind of self control do you have over your anger? What kind of self-control do you have over your sexual desires? What kind of self-control do you have over your love for money? That is a big question that I want you to ask yourself this moment. God wants us to ensure that our defense stays strong and unaffected at all times proverbs chapter 25 the verse number 28 
I'm reading from the New International Version. It says that, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Like a city whose walls are broken through, which means that you are defenseless. The moment you fail to be in charge of your life, the moment you fail to control certain aspects of your life, what you do, what happens is that you hand over your destiny, you hand over your entire life into the hands of the devil to control it for you. And remember, he's one of the three major things that we are waging war against as Christians. I said that as Christians, we regularly, we are regularly at war against three things. The world, which is things outside us, and the flesh, that is things within us that makes our being, and the devil. The chief among them is the devil. The Bible says that he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If you don't know how to control yourself, your defense is broken. And what happens is that he invades your life to steal your ability to control yourself and begin to deceive you, give you ideas so that you begin to rationalize sin, so that you begin to rationalize your wrongdoing, so that you begin to rationalize anything that you do that is not in line with the word of God. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. It doesn't matter that you've been able to gather some souls under your feet that you preach to on a regular days and times. It doesn't matter. That does not define your success in the area of self-control. It only tells what you can do around you. But have you been able to conquer yourself? In the Bible, we read about Moses in Numbers chapter 20, the verse number 8 to 11, where the people of Israel cried for water. We are talking about a man of God, a prophet who interacted with God. A great prophet to whom the Ten Commandments were given. A great prophet whose face radiated with the glory of God that the children of Israel had to beg him. The Bible said that for his lack of self-control, he couldn't control his anger. When the people of Israel put pressure on him that they require water, they castigated God and castigated him. He couldn't handle it. And out of frustration and anger, he struck the rock. Water came out all right, but his defense got broken. Remember what we read in the book of Proverbs. It says that like a city without walls, or the city whose walls are broken through, is a person who lacks self-control. So the moment Moses lost it, he couldn't control himself, and then he struck the rock. The Bible said that his defense got broken through, and the devil invaded. And God said, because of these, you will not make it to the promised land. Look at the man called Judah. Judah prophetically received the mantle of rulership. The staff of rulership, according to the prophetic utterance that was made over Judah by Israel. The Bible said that the, the mantle of rulership would not leave them until Shiloh. But what happened? He's supposed to provide a king for Israel. But the kingship was delayed for 10 generations from Judah to David. Why was it delayed? Because of his inability to 
control himself. Genesis 28, the verse number 12 to 17. The Bible gave an account of this young man called Judah who lost it because of his lust. He lost it totally. Genesis chapter 38, the verse number 12. And I read, In the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was confronted, comforted, and went up into onto his sheep shares to Timna and he and his friends the Bible gave an account in the verse and, and he and his friends had time because they want to share their sheep and the Bible gave an account from the verse number 13 and it was told that's where I wanted to start from and it was told to Tama saying behold your f thy father in law goeth up to Timnath to share his sheep you see Tama was so clever and knew Judah inside out he knew that Judah was a man who could not control himself he knew that Judah was a man who lacked self-control, whose walls are broken through. So he, she said to herself, I will go up and deceive this man to have a sexual relations with me in order for me to bear children since he has refused to give me his third son. How predictable was Judah. So predictable that exactly as Tama predicted, he acted. The verse 14, she took off her widow's cloth and covered herself with a veil and disguised herself and then sat down at the entrance of a name which is on the road to Timna, for she saw that through though Shela had grown up, she had not been given, she had not been given to him as wife. And in verse 15, when Judah saw her, he thought, you see what I said? Your thought defines your action. And your action becomes your habit. And your habit defines your destiny or determines your destiny. The verse number 15, let, I re let me read again. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute. Which means that Thelma knew that Judah was into prostitutes. So his circumstance was became a platform for him to then exploit his area of weakness what area in your life is out of control tama knew that that part of his life was out of control anything he sees by the wrong side he will surely have it and then when you continue says that For she had covered her face, the verse 16, not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law, he went over to her by the roadside and said, Come now, let me sleep with you. Look at this. His self-control was out of order. What area in your life is out of control? He was predictable. Tama predicted that if I sit by the roadside, this man would definitely ask me for sex. 
and exactly as she thought the man acted that way and do you know the consequence it delayed the kingship that was prophesied over his life for a thousand years one thousand years because of his action his descendants suffered for nothing they were denied of their rights their birthright because of his lack of self-control his was sexual immorality prostitution and he justified saying because my wife just passed away i had the right to sleep with any woman that i see and that is what we see around us people try to rationalize the evil things that they do and they justify it based on their circumstance but i pray for you that whatever area in your life that is out of control may the spirit of the lord give you strength and deliver you from that deception of the enemy in the name of jesus And then the Bible gave an account of David. Who was David? David was the young man that was able to use just his bare hands to kill a bear. He killed wild animals. He even slew Goliath. And the Bible gave an account that he conquered all the enemies of Israel. But there was one thing he could not conquer himself. His inability to control his sexual desire. Great men have fallen from presidents to archbishops to pastors to lay men in the church. Have fallen because of sexual immorality. They cannot control their sexual appetites and their sexual desires. A man sees a woman today the next day they are in bed all in the name of modernism may the Lord deliver you today in the name of Jesus David in spite of his exploit was not able to conquer his desire for women and the Bible gave an account in 2nd Samuel chapter number 11 the verse number 1 to 3 that when it was time for kings to go to war he sent Joab and then he was he was at home walking on the roof of his, his palace what was he looking for? women as usual and this time he saw this beautiful woman having her bath and then she sent for the woman and when she when he sent for the woman and when he inquired and he was told that it was Bathsheba the wife of Uriah the Bible said that he did not stop there he could not control himself and say that as for this one it belongs to another man he persisted sent for the woman and have sexual relations with the woman a king who can call any woman from anywhere who is single he can marry any time of the day because at the time he was the law he could do whatever he want but he could not control himself taking a woman that belonged to another man and to add salt to injury he even be design he was the architect of the man's death when he was not able to manipulate the man and put the pregnancy around the neck of the man he decided to push him to that part of the battle where he will be killed and uriah died nobody saw it but god saw it from above God did not allow him to justify because of his circumstance. He had everything, but he could not control himself. Nathan came, and as a consequence, it was prophesied over him that the sword would not leave his house. Amnon then slept with Tamar. 
they were siblings the children of david began to sleep with each other because he introduced that immorality the la that lack of self-control became a seed in the family it does not end there absalom killed his brother amnon it does not end there absalom rose against his father kicked him off the throne and then on broad daylight slept with all his father's wives and concubines on a rooftop that everyone could see lack of self-control great man david but he could not control his sexual appetites he could not control his sexual desires my question to you is that which area of your life is out of control what area is out of control today the lord has sent me to speak that word the word that is full of life and power into that area to bring revival to that area that you'll be empowered from above to be able to exercise self-control over that situation over that area of your life if I want to continue, this was a man, a great man, who could tear the, 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 the jaw of a lion like he was tearing tissue paper. Something. He uses his bare hands to kill wild animals. He used the jaw of a donkey to destroy a lot of his enemies. He conquered everyone. But he could not conquer his lust for Delilah. He broke the covenant that he had with Jehovah God. And a prophet of God. A judge. Whose birth was prophesied before he was even conceived. He was captured by the Philistines. And he was tied at a place and the rest of his life they use red iron to gut out his eyes and the rest of his life was in a secular motion he was doing the job of an ox or a donkey he was grinding grains of rice and corn he was going on the secular motion all of his life and people pass by and they ridicule him they insulted him why because he conquered everything but he could not conquer himself a young man called Esau the twin brother of Jacob the Bible gave an account in Genesis 25 the verse 32 to the verse 34 Bible made it clear that this man was so hungry and because of bread and a stew made of lentils the bible said that he sold his birthright for a, just a course of meal he sold his birthright he could not control himself some of us when we are hungry we do things that are outrageous we lie about people we even sell people because we are hungry we say things that are not true we deceive people manipulate our way around because of our stomach just for a meal self-control Sometimes when we think about self-control, we think about sexual immorality and say, because I don't fornicate, I don't commit adultery, I have self-control. That is not it. Esau's inability to control himself, his area of weakness, his area, uh, the area of his life that was out of control was, has to do with gluttony because of food. He sold his birthright. A man called Gehazi, assistant prophet. He was deputy to the major prophet Elisha. He was to succeed this man. 
And then when Naaman came and God used Elisha to heal Naaman, and he, Naaman offered this gift, God spoke to the prophet and said, Don't take it. For if you take it, you are taking that prophet, uh, that leprosy. And then for his inability to control his greed, Gehazi just disappeared and then met the man somewhere in the middle of the road and said, my master sent me. How many of us have done that? My master sent me. You go and collect things in the name of other people when they have no idea. It means that you lack self-control. It means that the area of your life is out of control and you need divine intervention. You need divine intervention. He collected everything. 2 Kings chapter 5 verse number 20 to 27 instead of him becoming the major prophet to succeed Elisha he took over the leprosy from Naaman so Elisha had to die and he went to the grave with his anointing why because somebody who was called by God whose destiny was to succeed Elisha and continue with the anointing fail in the area of self-control because of his inability to control his greed. Elisha died with the anointing that his bones was able to resurrect a dead person because somebody failed to control his greed. Judas was a thief. He was stealing every day. And for just 30 pieces of silver, something he, he could even steal more than that if he had continued with the Lord Jesus. He sold him. Luke chapter 22, the verse number 3 to 6. Matthew 26, 15. He sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Lack of self-control. He, so, he was so greedy. He could not control his greed. Today, because of greed, many marriages have broken down. Because of greed, many families are broken down. Family relationship broken down. People are not talking to their own siblings because of greed. Because of just a simple legacy that was left. A simple house that was left by the parents for them to share. One feels so wise and because of greed want to take everything. Family. Are now at the verge of killing themselves. Because of someone's inability to control their greed. If I will continue, there are a lot of people in the Bible, a lot of examples that I can give to you. But the most important thing is that God wants you to understand that you can get to greater heights with your skill. You can get to greater heights with your experience. You can get to greater heights with what you have on the outside. But if you lack self-control, you are finished. What area in your life lack self-control? What area in your life is out of control? What kind of control do you have over your sexual desires? Over your anger, over your greed, over your love of money. What kind of control do you have over your marriage? What kind of control do you have over your relationship? Even over your Christian life, your work with Christ. What kind of control do you have over it? Do you do what he desire? Or do you do things contrary to what he expects of you? Something is wrong somewhere. And no one is to be blamed except you. Two great men attended a conference to conclude my sermon today. 
and one of their spiritual songs stood to the pulpit and said I require prayer from you because I believe in corporate anointing so he asked the congregation to pray for him he said that I've been able to master everything but there is an area in my life that I so lack and that is self-control I have the knowledge the Bible says that to virtue add knowledge and to knowledge add self-control but he said I lack self-control and then one of the bishops around shouted son you are not alone I also need prayer in that area and then the other bishop the most senior of all said he screamed on top of his voice and said tell them that is your area of weakness we will pray for you a week after he was exposed in the newspaper of having a sexual affair with a prostitute outside his marriage he did not acknowledge that he need to work on his life today because of pride people think that because they've been long in christ because they've been in christ for 10 15 years they they they, they are immune to certain sins they are immune to certain attacks and deception of the devil the two were prayed for they swallowed their pride some of us the area that we cannot control is pride they swallowed their pride and said this is the area we need help they surrounded and they had corporate prayer said for them and the one who thought he was immune a week after he was exposed and his marriage his ministry everything about him became began to go down and then those who watch the video of that conference said to themselves he's going down because of pride if he had controlled his pride and then also requested for prayer even when that thing happened maybe he's done it already but it was only exposed after a week people might have sympathized with him because he has publicly acknowledged that he's not perfect that is what god wants you to do he wants you to open there's no god like jehovah there's no god like jehovah there's no god like jehovah